Hey, it's Ronald Jones II, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday, October 9th. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, I'm Andy Holloway. The Fantasy Footballers back with you. More matchups today. Week 5 has begun. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers won by three touchdowns over the Chicago Bears last night. Oh. Is that what happened? Is that what happened? Ah! Uh, my, if, for the podcast <laughs> listeners and not the YouTubers, Mike just threw uh, 52 cards into the air. That was a magic trick. <laughs> which you Matt ha- Nagy, a.k.a. Job from Arrested Development. Uh, he pulled it off again. I, I don't know how. Look. That, that that's magic. They I never was, reveal I was. their tricks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The illusionists came through. They are four and one. Um, yeah, and I was lying. The Bears won. The the Bears the Bears took it home, despite him doing his best job at the end of the game. And so I you know I tweet out the gif of Job. I'm trying to give him the credit while taking my shot at Matt Nagy. They're four and one. And I get some Bears fans who are like it's, it's not even accurate anymore. I'm like, so you were super into that. Second down, deep shot when you could have just basically ran the clock out. Like I'm all for being super aggressive, but that was like, uh, how do- I'll, I'll, it's self fulfilling prophecy now for for Matt Nagy though. We've established the magician, so anything he does, you're going to read the magician into it. Not if he had just ran it twice. I mean, he does he deserve credit for putting Nick Foles in at quarterback after what we saw last yes. night? Okay. Yes. Well, be, be, I was well, positive well, they weren't going to score any points in that game at all. He he does. He he re, he deserves the credit for putting Nick Foles in, but he also deserves the shame for putting Mitchell Trubisky in for multiple games this year, despite winning. You mean former Pro Bowler, Mitch yeah. Trubisky? I mean from that, two years ago, dude. That defense, man, legit. Um, yeah. I mean, it was a you know a tough game for Scotty Miller. <laughs> oh no. I, we went this into this dude. game thinking Mike Evans was probably in worse physical shape than Scotty Miller. This dude. Oh, I, I pour if, one out for everyone who started Scotty Miller last night. And, and Fuckland, know that Mike is uh, pouring two out for me then because uh, I'm with you if you started Scotty Miller. I have now... Um, Multiple leagues. Yep, I have had to start him twice. Uh, both times appeared to be a good start, and uh, it was not. So you've gotten both potty. Yes, I have gotten two potty Millers, number two. You're going to start him next week? Uh, no, which means he'll go off. He's okay. going to have a fantastic well, week. And we, we when we had the conversation about Jimmy Graham during the the matchup breakdown of you're like, okay, I'm in on Jimmy Graham. He goes up nothing. You're like, ah, crap. Then Jimmy Graham has a great game. Okay, I'm back in. Jimmy Graham terrible. Then d- did you see that? It was catch? a great catch. Like, I, I'm, I'm like Footland. This Jimmy Graham catch, one-handed in the end zone, is awesome. was awesome, man. Yeah, no matter what touchdown he catches, he gets up and he kind of flexes and shows his, you know, manhood or whatever. But this one was deserving of it completely. It was. Uh, Grandpa let's, strength. Let's talk about some more players that, that actually did perform for fantasy football last night. Uh, Ronald Jones was impressive on almost every one of his carries last night. 17 for 106, had a big run uh, in the middle of that game. If you started Ronald Jones, you're happy. Uh, Mike Evans came down with a touchdown, 5 for 41, had a couple deep shots his way, nine targets. This was Mike Evans. I mean, this is a good game. Honestly, I was I – was, I played Mike Evans in in the in our Dynasty League. After he caught another pass, though, so after the two-yard touchdown, I was a little disappointed that, that, we, it wasn't. that we didn't get another Mike Evans game of one reception for one touchdown. Oh, you actually just wanted the narrative versus yeah. the fantasy points? Yeah, you just you want to watch it burn sometimes. David Montgomery – Had a fantasy game. He scored a touchdown on the ground. He had seven catches. For how many yards, Andy? Seven, like a running back with seven receptions. Let's, if they're bad, you know, they're getting, what, what, seven yards of catch? About 49 yards? 30 yards. 30 yards on the ground. 
Mike's unhappy because I started David Montgomery against him and was saved by the touchdown and the receptions. Uh, David Montgomery is going to be great. I mean, he's going to be great for fantasy because this was a terrible matchup and he was inefficient. He was ineffective. Um, and he had a great fantasy day. So, it, it, you know, going forward when the matchups are better, if you're getting this volume, he should be solid. Friday. Allen Robinson, whew, I think you could target him on every play. You could. Which Foles tried to do for parts of the game, and it worked out. He had 16 targets in this one, 10 for 90, and is a must-start each and every week mm -hmm. with Nick Foles. Yes, he, he absolutely is. And I just want to highlight... Uh, something that was said in our company Slack because I've never heard it said this way, and it was it gave me such a, a delight. Where I think it was Mooney was w w like he put a, a post move on, and he was wide open, mm -hmm. and oh, Nick, and Nick was... Foles just absolutely missed him. And then uh, our, then Damon, our manager's like, yeah, but that ball was wide open. <laughs> I mean, I I I thought that was super funny as well. It was a, some of the ugliest <laughs> passes I've ever open. seen. Just Nick Foles was no, awful to start that game. No one was on that ball. He he's so streaky. Like they they highlighted the streak, but it's like this is absolutely true. Nick Foles is like the streakiest quarterback I've ever seen. Yeah, that's I maybe that's why Matt Nagy's willing to say he's our quarterback no matter what because we'll just catch a streak and that'll be good yeah. enough with this defense because you weren't catching a streak with Mitch Trubisky. That's correct. Oh. News and notes from around the league. All right, we'll they, get we'll get there, Mike. After after news and notes, I was just going to say that you catch a streak with with Mitch Trubisky. Just, different kind of streak. It's just oh. a different kind of streak. <laughs> You're upset. I went into news without letting you make a poop joke. I am okay. I couldn't keep it in. What's the latest on the COVID situation? With the uh, Broncos and Patriots game, the Bills and Titans game, these have been up in the air. Do you think we're going to have them this week? So, it, it, obviously, this is this could change at any time. Right this second, everything appears to be on the new schedule uh, to have football this week. Obviously, if this changes, follow us on, on Twitter. We'll make sure you're aware. I'm sure all of your apps will give you push notifications as well. But the Broncos Patriots are going to be playing Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern which is going to be super weird for us on the West Coast. We'll have a 2 p.m. game going on on, on Monday. Wow. That'll be fun. What? Um, the Bills-Titans moved to Tuesday, so you can go to TuesdayNightFootball.com, and um, then hopefully the Bills-Chiefs game uh, the, the next week will be uh, moved from Thursday to Sunday, assuming the Titans continue to have negative test results. So Monday is it is a doubleheader then? Because yes. if that game starts at two or five Eastern, then eight Eastern, oh, uh, is is the NFL trying to turn no. the lemons into lemonade here and get people used to the idea of not at all double headers on Monday? No, I don't. Th I mean, because we've had them. I mean, we've had them multiple times a year. We've done the Monday Night Football double headers before. This is. This, I, let me tell you something. The NFL is not happy about what's happening. Oh, I don't know. I, I get that. That's. I'm just saying. Like they didn't used to have Thursday Night Football either. And then they just kept like, hey, what about, what about these games on Thursday? And then now it's every single week. The Jets Cardinals, the Jets had a presumptive positive COVID test on Friday. So that game, right now, the plans are normal. Uh, but that is another game that could see a schedule adjustment, whether it's moving to Sunday night, whether it's moving to later in the week. Oh, based, triple header Monday. You, you might get there. At this point, I do wonder, for fantasy purposes, if you are in a position where there's one game, that is in question. It's easier to do the thing where, okay, that team accommodates it on their bench. You play the alternatives. If you have three or four games that become in question, you know, what is the solution for a fantasy commissioner to best accommodate this? Because to me, it almost feels like you almost, you need to expand the bench size. It's not just COVID IR. It's actual flexibility, which means if you're in a four or five bench situation, there, there's. Uh, it's very prohibitive for a fantasy football manager to prepare. If I have to prepare for three or four games that could be missed, how do you even do that with three or four bench yeah, spots? I, I can speak from experience here. Most of my team uh, have at least the question marks surrounding whether or not they'll be able to play. So I think expanding the benches is one route. Another, if you can. I mean, like... Uh, Sure, There's platforms, they're not even going to let you do that. And if you can't, I think another route, and, and w Mike, you've brought this up since before the season, right? COVID has been sucky. Mm -hmm. Don't make it more sucky in fantasy. Have you know the commissioners 
do whatever you can to to help the teams that are hit by this. So if that means allow, you know, if your league decides, hey, let's allow someone to dr to put X, Y, or Z players onto waivers, they get to pick them back up so that they can roster replacements. Sure. I think that this is the year where you have a little bit of that grace. Is that almost like uh, like the taxi squad situation? You could just have a COVID squad roaming on the yeah, kind of waiver well, wire. Yeah, I, it, it's unfortunate, but hopefully we get all these games this weekend. Mm -hmm. That that's the where I'm leaning right now. I yeah, that, I think we'll have them. I I do I do too. I think every game is played. All right, we have uh, matchups to get into for Clan Friday. I'm going to blitz the rest of this news. Uh, Lamar Jackson, he's expected to play. He had missed a couple of practices, mm -hmm. one with a knee, one with a uh, tummy ache. Yep. That's, that's what I hear. Julio Jones did not practice on Wednesday or Thursday. Dan Quinn said they'll continue to take things easy with him. Uh, they'll have a better idea regarding his status on Friday. Be ready. I don't think he's going to play. I don't think so either. Michael Thomas, Jared Cook, both limited on uh, Thursday. They're a Monday night game, making this even more difficult for fantasy football players. What's your gut thought right here with Michael Thomas and Del uh, Jared Cook? It's not just Monday night. You have also the Saints are on bye week next week so if Michael Thomas is like yeah he he probably could go or we can get Michael Thomas two full weeks off as we head into the main stretch so my gut is telling me that Michael Thomas is not going to play yeah I I think if he's healthy he's going to be out there and, and that's the question but your point stands for both Michael Thomas and Jared Cook who was jogging last week with the groin injury but again you can get two weeks if you leave him out and oftentimes we see NFL teams mm -hmm. take advantage of that the Saints are seven and a half point favorites as it stands right now for the Monday night game, so that could factor into their decision making. Debo Samuel didn't practice on Thursday due to illness, non COVID illness, and Henry Ruggs practiced in full on Thursday. That's actually notable. If it if, is. if Ruggs was out there, I'd be rostering him. I, I mean, completely agree. Yeah, he flashed in the early part of the season, got injured, but I'm interested in seeing what Henry Ruggs could do in that offense. He's a one touch man. Mm hmm. And then uh, a reminder, jointhefoot.com. You get access to the extra episode every week. And then you get access to the Injury Blitz podcast. And that is uh, our injury expert, Matthew Betts, taking a look at the Friday practice reports, which we don't have access to this morning, uh, breaking down all the injuries, what his expectations are for these players so that you're prepared, which that's, a, that's an area you can <laughs> take advantage of if you're already dealing with these COVID unknowns. Make sure you know what's going on with the injuries and get game day alerts. Mike will be live once again on Sunday morning. You can learn more about all of that at jointhefoot.com. It is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Yep, and another perk of being a supporter at jointhefoot.com is we, right. we give away something special each and every Friday from Pristine Auction. Mike, you'd be pretty excited to win this one. It's a DJ Chark jersey. Oh, and I was so close because the winner was Brandon Wright. Is that? Oh, wait, is this? Is this wait your brother? Wait a minute. Yeah, you, no. It's totally, guys, don't worry about my new the imaginary address brother, is Brandon. your address. <laughs> it's Brandon uh, with an A in at the end, though. Hey, you do you, Brandon. That's interesting. Yeah. All right, Brandon Wright wins the DJ Chark jersey. You can check out all the sports memorabilia at pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS for $10 off your first item. Brooks, do we have anything else to talk about? Or are, we, are we getting back into these matchups? Matchups. All right, let's do it. Fantasy Forecast. All right, yesterday we covered, uh, what was it, seven games on yesterday's show? Jags, Texans, Cardinals, Jets, Eagles, Steelers, Rams, uh, Washington, the Bengals, the Ravens, the Dolphins, 49ers, and the Colts and Browns game. So if you uh, want those games broken down, go listen to yesterday's show. Let's start here. The New York Giants at 0-4 take on the Dallas Cowboys, who are 1-3. Such a division they have up there in the East. Uh, how, how far out are the Giants? At one game. And They're actually uh, two games ahead of the division. They are 0-4, and, and I think you're right. I think they are one game out. Cowboys are nine-point favorites, however. It's a 54-point over-under, and uh, the combined record of the NFC East this year, it's 3-12-1. Y'all should be embarrassed. Yeah, or, or Cardinals used to be part of the NFC East. You could make a trade, Those and I would scheme. be willing to... <laughs> 
scooch on over to the NFC East this year because I don't really want to play the Seahawks and the Rams and the 49ers. Fair. So I don't know. Brooks, take care of that. Um, Dak Prescott, okay, you're going to start him. He's throwing for <laughs> an average of 422 yards a game. Lock him into your lineup probably each and every week for the entire season unless the Dallas Cowboys have a defensive uh, transformation, the likes that we've never seen. Yeah, uh, I will say Tyron Smith, uh, the left tackle extraordinaire for the Cowboys, he's gone for the season now. Mm -hmm. Now, he's missed games this year, and Dak has obviously been phenomenal. But we did see in years past where when he did not have uh, Smith at the left tackle, oh, th there were some issues. Goodness, that Falcons game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Ezekiel Elliott, you're playing him Amari Cooper. Yep. Uh, how do you feel about CeeDee Lamb and Gallup in this matchup? Probably pretty good. Yeah, I, you're more confident in CeeDee Lamb simply because the targets are there. They're like they're manufacturing ways for Lamb to touch the ball. Michael Gallup is still in play as a flex player. He's he, still running a ton of routes. Like So it's not just that Lamb, uh, Lamb has taken his spot on the field and he's not out there running. All three of them are running a ton of routes, so... He, but just treat Gallup accordingly as the big play flex player for your roster. For context, we have Amari Cooper up at wide receiver six. That's our consensus rank for him this week. C.D. Lamb is at 21, Gallup at 26. So both of those in the wide receiver two realm. And Dalton, Blake Jarwin Schultz should be played with full confidence. He was not on the injury report. So he, he is full systems go. That would be six starters on the Dallas Cowboys offense potentially that are, you I'd know. I'd be happy to start them. Yeah. Yeah. It's rare, but when you have that team or two every year that's got the bad defense and the – it's just the quantity of yards, 1,690 passing yards for Dak. Now, I will say this. I, I'm you, you got to go with what is happening, the trends, what this team can do on the offense. They are absolutely incredible. Everyone uh, can get a piece of the, of the fantasy pie here and, and have a, a decent game. I am concerned that the 0-4 Giants and Daniel Jones aren't going to be able to do a lot. Like Daniel Jones, on paper, this looks like a fantastic streaming option, somebody that you would want to get in there, and I'm willing to do that, but it is absolutely risky business. Daniel Jones, two total touchdowns on the year through four games. That is abysmal. You're going to need some Pepto-bismol yeah. for, that, for that abysmal. So I... I who are you starting? I mean, I'm I'm willing to start Evan Ingram because the tight end situation is a wasteland, but with this super plus matchup, who are you actually excited to plug into your roster? Well, see now you changed the, right. you changed the okay. question. Okay, who are you willing to play? Yes, that that excited not many, but I will say this. I made the decision. Let me give you a a, a case study in why we say sometimes your starts and your sits are very contextual. Last night I started David Montgomery against you, Mike. Based mm. on his performance, it was going to determine one of my two flex spots in our matchup. He had a good game. He put up almost 17 fantasy points in our league. So I pivoted. I As of today, I am starting Devonta Freeman in this matchup over McCole Hardman. McCole Hardman is a very boom-bust candidate. Devonta Freeman's snap count went up significantly last week, caught four passes, and because of this matchup and the situation that we find ourselves in with Cow the Cowboys, the over-under, I think Freeman is a lock for four to five catches in this game. Okay. Probably a very similar game to David Montgomery. I'm willing to take that guaranteed production over the risk that McColl isn't involved in the offense. Yeah, and I, I'm going to throw these wide receivers out as as fine plays as well. I, I actually am not afraid of Golden Tate. Darius Slayton was my taking it to yeah, 100 like player that I, I think could have a big game. The, the Dallas offense is great. We're sitting here saying we'll play six players. They're going to be down. And remember this, Foot Clan, before we got into the NFL season, we loved Daniel Jones' outlook, yeah. but we said do not draft him. Why? Because his opening season schedule, we already knew what was going to come. It wasn't going to be good. It was Pittsburgh on the road in Chicago, the 49ers and Rams. That is as tough as it gets. That's what he's played so far. So, yeah, he's, he's not played well, but he's also not had an easy stretch. Let's see what he can do against, you know, the, the Cowboys' easy defense. And – I totally recognize this could be a trap game, but I, I if I had to bet, I would bet that the Giants oh. have a good offensive performance. The, I, I appreciate it, Jason. Thank you. The implied point total for the Giants, at least from Vegas's perspective, is 22 and a half points. So, uh, trap or not, that's where they're expecting the Giants to be. Evan Ingram was, uh, you know, somebody that Mike has brought up yes. this week, the start of the week. 
So interesting at the tight end position. Before we grab this next matchup, we want to thank today's sponsors, keeping this podcast going, uh, helping Brooks uh, buy a house. And uh, congratulations, Brooks. Thank congratulations. you. When, when are you moving it? Maybe next week. Oh, uh, man. No, what day specifically? Because I am, <laughs> I'm need to get my dental appointments lined up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We want to thank uh, Lightstream uh, for supporting the show. If you're like most people, you have a balance on your credit cards at a – uh, you know, at a higher rate of interest than you would like. Why not turn those balances into one monthly payment at a lower fixed interest rate? Start saving yourself some money. That's kind of common sense. You want the lowest possible interest rate. Save money month to month. And uh, Lightstream offers credit card consolidation loans from 5.95% APR with auto pay and excellent credit. And they've been doing this for a long time. The rate is fixed, so it will never go up over the life of the loan. So it's another way of kind of guaranteeing that you're in a better situation there. Our listeners can save even more with an additional interest rate discount. The only way to get that discount is to go to lightstream.com slash footballers. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash footballers. Subject to credit approval, rate includes 0.5% auto pay discount. Lowest rate requires excellent credit and terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash footballers for more information. And we'd like to thank Navy Federal Credit Union. Navy Federal membership is open to veterans from all branches of the military and their family members, too. If you're looking at buying a car in the near future, you can get a Navy Federal auto loan. Uh, you can estimate your monthly payments with their online auto loan calculator before you apply. That way you can cruise into a nice monthly payment you can afford. And right now, rates are as low as 1.79% APR. You can join over one and a half million veterans that Navy Federal serves and enjoy 24-7 exceptional service and powerful products created with you and your life goals in mind at Navy Federal. Their members are the mission insured by NCUA, open to the armed forces, the DOD, veterans, and their families. Credit and collateral subject to approval, rates subject to change, and are based on credit worthiness, rates available for new vehicles. Message and data rates apply. Visit NavyFederal.org for more information. All right, the Las Vegas Raiders at 2-2 two and two take on the Kansas City Chiefs, who are 4-0. and oh. This game is a very healthy, very wondrous 55-point over under. The Chiefs are massive 11.5-point favorites. The Raiders are no longer undefeated. In fact, they're on a bit of a tailspin here. But the the – Implied point total for the Chiefs, 33 points in this game. That's nice. Um, yeah, so let's break this one down a little bit. By the way, Mike, another reason I'm starting Devonta Freeman is I want to say that I beat you with Devonta Freeman and David Montgomery in my lineup. That oh would just goodness. give me a little bit of joy, and I'm, I'm sure it would make you throw up a little bit. I won't be here on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's look at this matchup. Obviously, Mahomes is inside of your lineup. How do you feel about... Um, the way Vegas views this game, you know, obviously the Raiders are heavy underdogs. We've seen the Chiefs defense through four weeks. You talk about, you know, you see the garbage time each and every week. Is there opportunities here for the Raiders to uh, surprise fantasy wise or, or are you not seeing it that way? I don't see it that way. I, I think this is, you know, not a great matchup for the Raiders. Um, while, you know, Darren Waller, the volume just has to be there. When he's been healthy, he's been great, so that's fine. And Josh Jacobs, of course, you're going to play. But Josh Jacobs, historically, his good fantasy games come in wins where he scores multiple times and has a massive output. Thankfully, he is definitely more involved in the passing game than he's been, so I don't think you're going to have some disgusting, horrible game here, but I also don't see this against the Kansas City Chiefs as one of those games that are, you know, where he's run the clock out and they're, uh, they've got a lead and he's got multiple touchdowns. The Chiefs defense has just been really, really good. So, to me, it's Jacobs and Waller. What about Henry Ruggs, though? No, I'm not playing Henry Ruggs. The, the, the Chiefs have proven to me now. I, I, I always doubt it. Every time we bring up the Chiefs for the last year, it's been – they lock down wide receivers, but they're going to be up, and you're going to need to throw on them, and the, it'll it'll happen. It will come. It doesn't. No wide receivers ever score on the Kansas City Chiefs. 
Well, uh, the recipe, I mean, speaking of Jacobs, the recipe for the Raiders to win this game is to slow the game down, right? That has been the one thing that you can try to do against the Chiefs, try to have a successful run game, give those opportunities, whether they're successful or not. The Chiefs are 17th against opposing fantasy running backs. I would definitely not be playing rugs either, Mike. For me, it's a stash on the bench and see the same way that we were talking about Keyshawn Vaughn. You probably weren't playing him, but you wanted to see if he had a bigger role in the offense. Uh, Darren Waller, yeah. I mean, he's going to be in your lineup each and every week if he's your tight end. Clyde edwards alaire Tyreek Hill, yeah. And then McCall Hardman, he's a tough decision each and every week for fantasy players. Last week, I believe, was the first time he's had, maybe in his last eight touchdowns, that he's had one in under 20 yards. Like mm. it was that little uh, tap pass situation, but he's generally a big play guy. Had 10 fantasy points last week in our league format. Kelsey's in your lineup. How do you feel about Watkins and other options here? Uh, not, uh, no, I, I wouldn't be in on that. The uh, It's going to be tough for the Raiders in this matchup to keep up. And and like and Sammy Watkins is only someone I want to play if I'm really confident in the other team's offense. So he, he's out. Demarcus Robinson seems to have lost, uh, you know, the, the starting job. So to, we'll see to McCole Hardman. So it, it's wild that Tyreek Hill, who came into the season as, you know, he's he's a really high-variance player. He will boom. He will bust. But he's been one of the most consistent wide receivers through four games. It's not just through four games, Mike. If you go to our website, we added some player profile advanced stats oh, per player. Hit me. And uh, we added a consistency score, which evaluates uh, basically how many times a player has put up a usable fantasy game over the last 16 games. So this is the four of this year going back to last year, and he is in A. He's doing it 62% of the time, which is one of the higher grades. Hmm. Being attached to Patrick Mahomes oh, it helps. A, it helps. a delight. Yeah. And he's found his way into the end zone this year, even in the non-traditional non-90-yard bombs. Right. Any other thoughts from this game? No, I think mm. this one's pretty straightforward. The Carolina Panthers at 2-2 two and two on a winning streak. Taking on the Atlanta Falcons, oh. 0 and 4. Sorry, could we? I don't think we even really said his name, but Clyde Edwards Alaire is a fantastic start. If uh, I mentioned this on our Sirius XM show, uh, we're, we're looking at players we're trying to trade for. Try and trade for Clyde Edwards Alaire because I believe this is the week that he finally catches up with with some of his uh, low scoring variants, and you won't be able to trade for him after this weekend. It's probably good advice at this point in the season in general to be targeting high opportunity situations in general. If you had done that with Mixon on the, you know, Jason brought up the opportunities last week, it might have benefited you. Anybody that is not, you know, touchdowns are hard to predict, but 20, 30 opportunities, it's it's good advice. When you have, the Raiders are 32nd against fantasy running backs. So like the recipe is there for Edwards to have his real breakout game. Yeah, and they could be, uh, if they are up, could be running a lot in the second right. half. Carolina 2-2, two and two, the Falcons 0-4. The Falcons are one-and-a-half-point favorites in this game. It's a 53-and-a-half point over-under. Uh, this game is littered with starts of the week on the Carolina mm -hmm. side of the ball. Jason, this game should be fun. Jason has Mike Davis. Davis has been outstanding, RB10, RB7 the past two weeks. Could get CMC back next week, but not this week, so Mike Davis is a must-start. Teddy Bridgewater is Mike's start of the week. Uh, you know, Mike... He he laid out the case for Teddy Bridgewater, and it begins with the fact that Atlanta is 32nd against fantasy quarterbacks. Teddy Bridgewater is still somebody that, and maybe you can talk me down here, he just scares me to start at the quarterback position because the variance is so potentially extreme, right? Uh, I feel like you could have that week that Atlanta's been giving up, top five type of performance. I think Bridgewater last week was fourth against Arizona. So you've seen the evidence of that. But I also worry that they succeed in other ways, and Teddy B gives you that week two 29 overall performance just because it's not as guaranteed. We haven't seen him in Carolina that long. Your confidence level is very high, though. It, it is, and it, it really comes down to touchdowns because even that uh, – so when he was the quarterback 29 week two, he still had 367 passing yards. They, uh, we highlighted it uh, – I don't know, a couple shows ago or whatever, uh, maybe it was this week, that he finally threw two touchdowns in a game. 
Teddy Bridgewater is throwing a ton of yards and it still has a touchdown rate of 2.8%, which is almost more. which is almost 2% under the league average. So I believe that Teddy Bridgewater versus the Falcons is a fantastic game. Uh, Mike Davis, uh, Mike Davis can still have a great game because he's a good receiving back, which just benefits Teddy Bridgewater as well. You brought up Robbie Anderson, start of the week, but we didn't talk a lot about DJ Moore. There is an opportunity here this week with the matchup, with the situation. Do you play DJ Moore this week? And again, it's it's hoping for a bounce back for him over somebody like Justin Jefferson at Seattle? Yeah, I, I, I would. I, I like both players, but DJ Moore is an excellent wide receiver, a special athlete in a perfect matchup. The The touchdowns haven't come for him. The The targets have been there. I am, I'm still starting DJ Moore this week. I know it's hard to recommend that because whenever someone has disappointed over the beginning of a season, it, it's really hard to, to double down. But the reality is DJ Moore has a perfect matchup here to have a great performance. Well, as does Justin Jefferson against Seattle, does. as does CeeDee Lamb against the Giants. Would you play CeeDee Lamb or DJ Moore? I think CeeDee Lamb is safer. Uh, DJ Moore's upside is higher. Will Fuller against Jacksonville or DJ I, Moore? I have Will Fuller one spot ahead of DJ Moore. It's it's Those guys are really interesting this week of Fuller, Moore, Lamb, and Marquise Brown. Uh, like The four of those guys is... It's really tough to to sort out which one you would actually really want to start. The uh, Atlanta defense has allowed 30-plus points in each game this that, year. That does help for DJ Moore. What's funny is their offense has kind of thrown us for a loop. They're second in seconds per play, so they're playing fast, but 21st in points per drive. They are playing inefficiently fast, and uh, they've had some injuries. Dealing with Julio Jones, injury, Calvin Ridley, disappearing act last week, whether it was coverage, whether it was injury, Ridley has, you know, Jason before the week began said, hey, he could goose this week and still in, still be the number one overall I wide receiver. He said it as a joke. <laughs> but he goosed. Yeah. And is still he, the number one over, overall He wanted to make receiver. sure that your math checked out. And it did. It did. So the Falcons are favored in this game. Gurley has managed to score four times this year. Yeah, you play him. And so he's in your lineup. How about Matt Ryan, though? I mean, it was not a pretty picture last week. But uh, he is favored. So the, the, the most recent update I've seen on Julio Jones, which is not a lot, but it says he will try to, for practice today if he, you know, the quote is like, if he feels like he has the strength in his legs today at practice, then he's going to play. If he doesn't, then he's going to sit out. Matt Ryan is so closely tied. His production is so closely tied to Julio Jones. Now, I know Calvin Ridley changes the equation this year, but his we've seen – all, uh, the history of Matt Ryan is when Julio Jones is out, you don't play Matt Ryan. You you get out of there. Now, does the recency bias of Calvin Ridley's goose egg change that for you, Jason? Are you Matt Ryan? Are you starting him as a QB one this week? The matchup is great, or I should say the the matchup. It, it it's it should great. Be. It's great. It should be. It's great as in it's a fifty near fifty four point over under, and the Falcons are slightly favored. So you're expecting a very competitive game. Yeah, Matt Matt Ryan's been good enough this year to start. He's not a must start. This is just a matter of who else you have available. I'm looking at at players that I think you know. I would start Deshaun Watson and Gardner Minshew in that matchup ahead of Matt Ryan. Um, so those are some pivot options. I see him as like a back end one or a high end two this week. There should be an opportunity with the implied point total of almost 28 points for Atlanta for somebody to step up if Jones sits. Is it Russell Gage? Is it Zacchaeus? Is it Christian Blake? Is it Hayden Hurst? Uh, I think it. I, I think it could be Hayden Hurst this week. Um, he, he's he's been running routes, been involved, and l last week was just kind of a nightmare for them getting down so big to the Packers. Um, I, I you know I I like what I've seen from Hayden Hurst. Not loving the fantasy output, but I think it's coming. All right. It's prime time. It's prime time for Kirk Cousins. Sunday night football. Uh -oh. The, the oh, Vikings no. at one and three. Taking on the Seahawks four and oh. Seahawks are seven point favorites. It's a big time, fifty seven point over under in this game. And uh I think we're all hoping for that fantasy bonanza with these two defenses. Yes we are. Uh so watch the NFL give us a 20 to 19 game like last night or something but 
Yeah, I think we have high expectations in this game. Russell Wilson sitting as the quarterback one through the first uh, four games of the season. Kirk Cousins, I believe, was Jason's stream of the week at the quarterback position. I didn't know it position. was prime time. I didn't know. <laughs> Averaging 25 attempts a game right now. He had one stinker against the Colts, but sometimes that happens and you didn't know what the Colts were, right? Sure. Right. This happened against San Francisco, I think, was either last year when they made the leap as a defense, and you're like, oh, man, what happened? And now you're kind of like, oh. That's probably what's going to happen the, against the Colts. The Colts happened, um, certainly. So I, I, you know, I, I, I do think this should be a good game. There is a chance for rain in this game, so you know, pay attention to the weather. But both players should be able to play through it. Not, not a, a, a massive downpour. Yeah, you have Kirk Cousins. So just he was already in streaming consideration. When if you look just at the matchup, because the quarterback, or the the Seahawks, thirty first against quarterback, thirty second against wide receiver. Delightful matchup for Adam Thielen. But the breakout of Justin Jefferson, rookie wide receivers in their third and fourth games don't just put up 100 yards all the time. Even if you're a, a top 10 pick at the wide receiver position, it this is, this is rare territory here for what Justin Jefferson has been able to do. So you could, like, he now has two weapons again. Kirk Cousins, it's not just everything has to go to Adam Thielen, and if Adam Thielen is off, and their connection isn't there, then Kirk Cousins is going to have a crap game. No, he has somebody else he can go to. So I, I'm with Jason that I think Kirk Cousins is a mighty fine stream this week. Yeah, I, I don't want to overstate my love for Justin Jefferson or his, his potential, <laughs> but I will. And uh, I, this is something that reminds me of the breakout year for Odell, where you see such an explosive player. Look, he went 7 for 175. That's 25 a catch. Last week, 4 for 103. That's 25 a catch again. This is explosive plays. And it does change the ceiling for Kirk Cousins. You're right about that. Thielen, of course you're playing him. Uh, Jefferson is my start of the week. Dalvin Cook is in your lineup every week. And if so he's and Chris not, Carson, man. you need to retire. Chris Carson. I think Chris Carson is – I don't think he's getting talked about enough. And it could be that the, the injuries have happened or just the fact that the – the national spotlight is on Russell Wilson, the new uh, King Chef Boyardee, Russell mm -hmm. Wilson, just in the breakout. Unlimited. He's unlimited in the breakout of DK Metcalf. Meanwhile, Chris Carson, even with some injuries spackled in here, has been the running back 7, 13, 26 when he got hurt, and then the running back 4. And now he has another matchup that is not scary at all against the Minnesota Vikings uh, defensive front. Pay attention to Chris Carson. Maybe maybe Chris Carson even it feels like this is a trade high moment. But I'm just I'm telling you the 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 sentiment about Chris Carson does not match the output that he is currently giving you. Which is awesome. Yes. That's a lot of output. Carlos Hyde, currently limited in practice limited. as of <laughs> Limited. Very nice. Uh he was limited in practice yesterday. Chris Carson was a full participant in practice. So the health is is on Chris Carson's side right now. Yeah, and to, you know, I think part of it, Mike, is because the passing volume went up so much. There were eight games last year that Chris Carson was over 20 rushing attempts in a game. He's not his highest. He had a 17 week, and then 14, and then 16. So the attempts have been down a little bit. The perception of the team has changed, but he's been so efficient. Mm -hmm. He's been hyper efficient. Uh, over four carry, 4.6, five last week. Scored two times last week. I think you're right. I think he his might be somebody that. Look, if the team rotates back towards a rush heavy attack at times, and it could, it, it gets even better. There's no guarantee that it's just still Russell Wilson chucking the ball 35 no. times a week. And that consistency grade you brought up earlier on Tyreek Hill, Chris Carson is, is as at an A, 75% of his games are start worthy games. And that doesn't even factor in like, his top end games. He's, he has been crushing it for a for over 16 games now and and he's uh, to just pile on here he has been involved in the passing game he's, yeah he's Three on a 16 game pace of 64 targets it, that's great uh, that's phenomenal for a player that two years ago was like man if he could only get you know 30 receptions he'd he would add a lot yeah, he's proven himself in that capacity tyler lockett dk metcalf yeah yep perfect yeah. match don't need to talk about them the hardest part about Metcalf Lockett is knowing, like, it feels weird to constantly want to put them both in my top five due to the matchups on the week. Yeah. And it's like, you know that both probably won't, but they have both they hit. Have, I mean, yeah. that's just hard to do, uh, but they've been outstanding. 
Metcalf has impressed me tremendously this year. Mm -hmm. But these these are two defenses that should afford a lot of fantasy points. The Broncos at one and three at the Patriots now on Monday night. The Patriots are eight point favorites. It's a forty eight and a half point over under. Uh, we don't expect Cam Newton. It or, was pushed to Monday, so yeah. it, it gives a little bit more realistic uh, opportunity for Cam to make it back, but we don't know. If Brian Hoyer walks out there and he's about 6'6", six, six, with the name Hoyer on the back <laughs> and starts running a lot, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have some questions. <laughs> I hope that they, if Cam sneaks oh. out there in a Hoyer jersey, he has to wear the Hoyer jersey and it's just real small right. on him. <laughs> Just, just, he's just nips out. Yeah, he's just it's just a teeny teeny jersey. Uh, the the fact that there is a spread on this game and we don't know who the starting quarterback yeah, I was is surprised. for the Patriots. <laughs> this is oh that is like that is so embarrassing for the Denver Broncos. You know the the Monstars in Space Jam. Yeah, of course. Before they get big, that's Brian Hoyer before, and then yeah, it's Cam yeah, Newton yeah. afterwards. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it, this is a game where uh, the Broncos, they've struggled all year long with the offensive side of the ball. We don't know if Drew Locke's going to be the quarterback. I mean, you got quarterback questions on both sides here. Is it Brett Rippon? Do we get some Driscoll mixed in with oh, his plans? Oh. Uh, but Melvin Gordon, uh, he's been an every week starter, right? Do you feel differently about him this week because the Patriots defense is so stout or do you this is this is david montgomery situation where you're you're starting melvin gordon the matchup stinks and now you get philip Lindsay back in here to siphon off some snaps and some of those uh, opportunities so gordon is he he has to be in play but you need to adjust your your hopes and your dreams for melvin gordon yeah the the, the patriots take away your best option right i mean and and the broncos only have two options uh it's melvin gordon and jerry judy if gilmore is oh, on man, jerry no, judy no no you are discounting what tim patrick has done far too greatly i promise you that that's not who the patriots are trying to lock down i'm just saying if gilmore is on judy and then they focus on melvin gordon i just are, don't don't we have no gilmore this week i mean isn't that the is gilmore out yeah Stephon gilmore is, gilmore the, Stephon gilmore with is COVID? COVID oh yeah. Pete, yeah. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that's great as I'm playing Jerry Judy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, Judy and Pat Patrick last week, six for 113 and a touchdown. Um, more targets. Judy had the one big play. But if I'm heads up against those two, I don't really see much of a difference between choosing one of those players in this game. Mike? Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. So right now, Jerry Judy is uh, – we got 15 receptions for 234 yards. Tim Patrick is 16 receptions for 209 yards. He, yeah, he we've is, been here before with Tim Patrick, too. Yeah, he, Tim Patrick is a fine player. He needs a more spicy name. This is the same situation yeah. that happened. It's the, it's the two first names, man. Yeah. we need. Uh, what, what did we change? Uh, Smash Jackson? That was a better <laughs> oh, Paul, name. Paul Perkins. Yeah. But uh, Tim Patrick is not as exciting as Jerry Judy, the alliteration. Yeah, yeah Jerry uh, Judy. That's the youthfulness. A, that's a hot name. The more that I think about it, I, you know, look, last week was the Jets. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, he, he, you know, you had some players show up. I, I don't think I want to start any Bronco in this game. Yeah, it kind of sounded fair. like we wanted to start a Bronco, didn't it? It did. It sounded yeah. like, oh, Tim Patrick's been good. Uh, you know, oh, with Gilmore uh, gone, Jerry Judy. I don't want. I don't want to start a Bronco. And and Noah Fant is probably going to make me. Is probably going to miss the game as well. Noah Fant's going to miss the game. So Melvin Gordon. That's it. Yeah. Find a pivot on his side or on the Broncos side. Yeah, yeah, we have Judy at 31 right now in consensus rankings. That so that's too kind of outside of, I mean, as bottom of the wide receiver three. So that, that lends itself to what you're saying, Jason. Judy would maybe be the shot then because you go for the big play with Jerry Judy over hoping for a foundational game from Patrick like the Jets game. Uh, what do you do at the running back position for the Patriots? I am willing to play Damian Harris. Uh, Sony Michelle will not be playing because he was placed on uh, IR. So this will be game two. So Michelle is out at least a couple more weeks. 17 for 100 against Kansas City with the combination of Brian Hoyer and Jared Stidham as his quarterback. Damian Harris is a good player and he's going to get opportunity. Yes, James White is going to be in there siphoning off the targets. Like Damian Harris is the Sony Michelle role. I feel better about Harris moving forward. without Cam Newton than with him. Okay, interesting. In terms of right. starting him in this game. Being able to get a touchdown on the goal line? 
No, without Cam Newton. That's yeah. that's what I'm yeah. saying. Oh, oh, oh no, it has nothing to do with really just the goal line. It just has to do with what I saw on the field last week. This was a team that didn't trust Jared Stidham or Brian Hoyer to throw the football. They made mistakes. They threw interceptions. Both of them did. And so they force-fed the ball to Damian Harris. 17 carries. That is not generally what you see from a single back inside of this offense. Even Sonny Michelle's great game the week before, it was like, what, nine carries or yeah, something nine. like that? Yeah. So I maybe you could do it either way. The Broncos have been really stout against opposing running backs. Only 14 fantasy points given up on the year on average per game to opposing fantasy running backs. So that is a little bit of hesitation. But Harris impressed me on film. Mm -hmm. I, th I thought he looked good. Faster, bigger than Sony. Both of those things. Yeah, th so then on the, the, the passing options, I'm not playing Nikhil Harry. It's not happening. Julian Edelman is interesting. Uh, our writers were highlighting this, and as soon as they started talking about it, it uh, it's like, oh, yeah. If you watched Julian Edelman playing last week, he was he was actively trying not to get hit. Now, I... I, not that it, not that wide receivers are looking for contact all the time, but he was intentionally as soon as a, a defender was in his space, he was going down Peyton Manning style. And so it's what what is what's actually going on here with Julian Edelman? Well, it's a good question. It's really hard to be dependent on Edelman with the quarterback situation to begin with. It's also important to remember Edelman is older, and we've seen consecutive years, not this year, but the previous few years where Larry Fitzgerald comes out on fire to begin a season as an older wide receiver and things start to slow down. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it's it's a possibility with an older wide receiver where you start to see some slippage. Yeah, he, he was limited. He's listed as limited with a knee problem. The hard part for Patriots players and Julian Edelman is he, you're just, you know he's there. He's always on the injury report because they – always put their players on the injury report. So you never really know, <laughs> is he actually hurt? Is he just kind of dinged up and they're putting him on there? Anyways, uh, Julian Edelman is a is a tough start this week despite Broncos giving up. I'm uh, trying to avoid points. him. Yeah, I, I don't want to play anybody other than maybe Damian Harris and, and Cam Newton if he's active. Yeah. And that's from both sides of the ball. Yeah, that's fair. The Los Angeles Chargers at 1-3 and three take on the 2-2 two and two New Orleans Saints in New Orleans, uh, presumably in New Orleans, assuming they don't have to move the game to the Hurricane. Uh, the Saints are 7.5-point favorites. It's a 51-point over-under. Drew Brees is Jason's start of the week, and you said that was kind of regardless of the Michael Thomas situation, the Jared Cook situation. Yeah, the, the Chargers' defense is, is just decimated with injuries, and I think that the Saints w w have enough weapons. Even if it's just a bunch of dump-offs to Alvin Kamara, Drew Brees gets all those points. It was announced this week. I don't know if we mentioned it, but Justin Herbert has been announced as the rest-of-season starter just based on his performances so far. Tyrod relegated to the bench when he's healthy. He's had three starts against Kansas City, Carolina, and Tampa Bay. He's averaged 35 passing attempts in those games for uh, an average of 25 completions, 310 yards, 1.7 touchdowns. Very impressive debut for mm -hmm. Herbert. Yes. Let me ask you this, though. Uh, not taking anything away from his potential, but not having Austin Eckler on the field. What impact is that going to have on his upside? I I think it's it probably does take a hit, um, but I, it, in the in the waiver show we were highlighting Justin Jackson, who Justin Jackson can come through and give you at least you know some of the production that Austin Eckler put out in the field. They're not the same player. Eckler is a much better player than Justin Jackson, but I think between him and Joshua Kelly, I think that this team and this offense could still get moving. Uh, Justin Herbert is he has kind of gone into that mantra of I should throw to my best player all the time it's and a sweet strategy and Keenan Allen's targets have skyrocketed since we had the Tyrod Taylor experience week one so Keenan Allen very confident in playing him Mike Williams is not likely to play uh, he did not practice on Thursday but with Keenan Allen and Hunter Henry I think that this offense continues to move and I, I think there will be enough and i we, we disagree on this, but I think that Herbert is fine if you are looking to stream a quarterback. All right. Uh, Jason, if you had to start Kelly or Jackson, who do you start? If I had to start, uh, I, I would start Joshua Kelly. I, I think he'll get more volume 
than Justin Jackson. And I don't love this matchup. I'm not looking, you know, one of the most popular start sit questions out there is Joshua Kelly or Justin Jefferson. I would, I would go Justin oh, Jefferson. Jefferson. Yeah. Easily, um, but Joshua Kelly over Justin Jackson within this backfield is is how I would rank them. If Michael Thomas misses this game. Mike mentioned they have a bye coming up. He could, yeah, they could put him on the sideline again. Is Traquan Smith a dart throw here? Yes. Okay, we we'll get him at forty two on the week. Kind of uh, like a dart throw, you know, where you're like, but you got to close one of your eyes, yeah. so your your depth reception is a little bit off. I always close both eyes when you're playing darts. Yeah, it, it's my it's led to some pretty impressive performances. <laughs> like it's led to some pretty impressive lawsuits. Yes, that is accurate. Uh, Jared Cook, if he's active, do you play him? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I, I think you yeah, yeah. play him in the tight end landscape. Guess, if yeah. you've got Jared Cook, you, you should have him in there. Uh, Chargers are pretty bad against opposing tight ends so far this year. I'm, I would be pretty surprised if Cook plays. Okay. All right, The uh, right, let's get to TuesdayNightFootball.com here. Uh, Buffalo Bills. Go to TuesdayNightFootball.com. Yeah, it's, they are a sponsor. Great website. They're a huge sponsor of the show. Uh, the Buffalo Bills at 4-0 and take on the 3-0 and Tennessee Titans, we hope. The Bills are eight-point favorites on the road in this one. It's a 49-point over-under. You know, I would expect the Buffalo Bills to be favored in this game regardless. I do wonder if that line is so large in part because of a depleted Titans team due to the COVID situation. Yeah, both sides of the ball, offense and defense, are very hurt uh, from the COVID IR list for the Tennessee Titans. You have no Humphreys. You have no Corey Davis on the offensive side, and, and they're missing several pieces on the defensive side. So I, it's going to be difficult for the Titans to really compete. Now let me ask you this, Andy. You, you had originally – Ryan Tannehill in as your start of the week. The matchup is perfect for the Bills, high-scoring game. Does the loss of Adam Humphreys and Corey Davis, does that scare you now of saying, well, there's not enough weapons to throw the ball to? Not really if I, if, if you have A.J. Brown back. If A.J. Brown's there, Johnny Smith, and then you combine that with what who I think has been kind of impressive this year as an option, Khalif Ramont, uh, Raymond, I don't know how you pronounce his last name, uh, but he he's had some deep catches this past uh, week or two weeks ago. I'm not that worried about um, Tannehill as long as he has Brown. If Brown's off the field and you're losing your top two, three passing options, you have to kind of downgrade his expectation. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's anybody that can start Ryan Tannehill this week because you don't know if this game's going to happen. I mean, you just you can't sit here and wait for Tannehill uh, against the Bills sure. on TuesdayNightFootball.com. Josh Allen, you're playing him. Devin Singletary. Yeah, so how, how do you break down the, the running back situation? Zach Moss got a couple practices in last week, ended up being uh, inactive. He's limited again. I don't know if we, we have the full – we won't have full information, I, I doubt, on Zach Moss heading into TuesdayNightFootball.com. Jason, are you playing Devin Singletary then with – any type of confidence because if Zach Moss no. is out, huge opportunities. Uh, you know, eighteen opportunities a game right now is what Singletary's getting. That that gets inflated the past couple weeks. Where are you at? Yeah, only if before Sunday they rule Zach Moss out, which I don't think we're going to know. I think it's going to be nebulous by the time you need to make the decision. So I'm going to act as if Devin Singletary has Zach Moss there. I'm I'm not in love with that as a as a start. It is a it is a good matchup. So it's not the end of the world. Don't play Devin Singletary. But if there's another good option, I'm going to assume Zach Moss is back and that his opportunity is, you know, cut in half. I'm pretty impressed with Singletary the last couple of weeks. He's super good. Like we've never got to talk him up, but as a player, I think he's phenomenal. Yeah, I would I would take a I probably wouldn't take your approach. I would probably play Singletary regardless. Because I don't think that Moss is going to walk back in after you know being limited this week and get half the opportunities. And Singletary's production is not touchdown dependent. I mean, that's not what we know with Singletary. So if you tell me he's going to get 15, 16 opportunities against the Titans, are you feeling good about that? In I guess not. May maybe. Well, just like week <clears throat> one was 16 opportunities against the Jets that turned into running back 38. Yeah. Uh, 13 opportunities against the Miami Dolphins that turned into running back 35. It, and then the next two weeks with Zach Moss out, you saw the, the snaps rise from, you know, averaging 58% to a 90% snap player. So it's... Sounds uh, like you're more on I I side more Jason's with Jason side. that 
I if Zach Moss is healthy, I think he comes back in and he gets that forty percent of work, gets passing work, gets goal line work. Stephon Diggs, yep. He's the wide receiver six on the year. Uh, John Brown, I saw the play in practice. Where he tweaked his calf. Yeah, he came up. Uh, it didn't look great, but they said he, he's okay. So do we expect yeah. him to play in he, this game? I watched him. He was not okay. <laughs> well, he wasn't okay after the, the immediate moment, but didn't he come back for a limited practice the next day? I do not know. I don't have Well, I don't want to misreport that, so you can sure. double-check that for me. He's currently listed as questionable. We have him outside the top 30 at the position, so – I worry, you probably have better options. I worry about the health of John Brown because this is a re-aggravation of the calf. So if let's say he's active and he goes out there and then another play happens and he's pulled from the game, I'm 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 not going to take that risk. If he is not active though, Gabriel Davis is, you know, a, a a a rookie that has been really surprising. The Bills love this guy, and if John Brown's gone, he will have the opportunity to be an important piece of the offense for Josh Allen's fire that he's been on. So I, you know, I doubt you're picking him up on a Tuesday night football.com to play him. Um, but if you're playing DFS, that's a name I think that would, uh, would be valuable. Uh, all right. Foot clan game day alerts at join the foot.com every week. Sunday live one hour before kickoff with Mr. Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? Yeah, that's right. Mr. 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 Mike. Uh, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> doctor Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? All right, we got one more segment today. Prop it like it's hot. Presented by Monkey Knife Fight. All righty. Let's bring you one of our favorite props from Probably like it's all. Monkey Knife Fight for week five. I'm going Darren Waller. Uh, the more or less numbers at 5.5 receptions. To me, this feels like one of the biggest gimmies on the week. Darren Waller, he had 12 receptions two weeks ago. He was hurt for the other game. I don't. I throw that one away. And then he had nine last week. So the last two times we've seen him on the field healthy, he's been well above that number. And with the line in this game, the Raiders passing all game long. He could have five and a half garbage time in the fourth quarter alone. This feels very similar to my Devontae Parker layup last week that we discussed because you've got a heavily targeted player. But it was a dunk, though. I thought it would. Well, it turned it, into a. Well, remember you had to convert dunk. it because you yeah. can't do layups. Right. Because you're bad at them. But you want to know who, and who can finish a layup with a dunk? Darren Waller. So I, I, do, I do like that That's one true. a lot. Um, I'm going with Michael Thomas on the Monday night game. He is he's listed right now at seven and a half receptions, and I'm going less than that because oh. you're not sure how involved Shade. he is. I I know it's it's hard it's hard to go less on receptions for the guy that just broke seven the and a half is a lot. That is it, we're not sure how healthy he is. You know how involved he would be. Um, you know, and are are the Chargers is the Chargers offense really going to push them to need to be throwing the ball? a ton in the second half of that game where you get over seven and a half. You know, last year he broke the NFL record and he only had two games with, with less than seven and a half receptions. So you'd say, okay. But now with a hobbled, uh, you know, Michael Thomas with Trey Quan and Emmanuel Sanders looking like they're involved and the Chargers offense, I think it's more like what you see in 2018 with Michael Thomas, which he was great, but nine of his games he finished – with less than seven and a half receptions. So I'm taking less on the Michael Thomas. And I cannot get enough of this Carolina-Atlanta matchup. So I'll, let's get some more skin in that game. Robbie Anderson, the more or less, is five and a half receptions. Robbie Anderson has been under that number once. He averages. Over the first four weeks, he is averaging seven receptions per week. So I am taking the more. The game line is 54 and a half points. Uh, I'm in with Robbie Anderson getting more than more than five and a half. All right, this has been a fun segment each and every week, and you can check out all of the player props. Uh, you can prop it like it's hot yourself over at uh, ballerspicks.com. Use the code BALLERS. Mm -hmm. yeah. You get a 100% yeah. deposit match up to $50 for Monkey Knife Fight, and they have tons of uh, great player props each and every week. It's super fun and easy to get in the games where, you know, you could just pick two players, and if you get both of them right, you, you know, you, you're, you're, you're in. two and a half times in your money. Uh, ballerspicks.com, like I said, use the code BALLERS for 100% deposit match up to $50.
ballerspicks.com. Lamar Jackson, one update. He did return to practice on Friday. So if you were worried, he's even though we go. said we thought he'd be fine, it, it's uh, even more helpful to know he's out there on the practice field. Good luck in week five. Like I said, Sunday live, one hour before kickoff. Mike, uh, Dr. Mike, will be available to you. That's Mr. Doctor, sir. Mr. Doctor, that's right. See, see you Sunday. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.